Richard Allen, you child murderer. Why did you do it? Today is not a day to celebrate, but the arrest of Richard M. Allen of Delphi on two counts of murder is sure a major step in leading to the conclusion of this long-term and complex investigation. That's a sense of relief, and yet we still don't feel this sense of joy. Why? The girls are never going to come back. The tragedy for the community here and everywhere. Shame on you! Shame on you, Richard! You're going to prison for the rest of your life! And welcome back. This morning, we're spotlighting the Delphi murders, getting you all caught up on this case. And at this point, the trial of Richard Allen is set to start in October. But justice seems to be delayed again and again for victims Abby Williams and Libby German. The latest hurdle, Judge Fran Gall will not recuse herself from the case. Allen's attorneys have accused her of being biased against them. So to talk about Judge Gall and all things Delphi, we want to bring in our resident expert, Court TV senior producer, Barbara McDonald, who also, by the way, produced the podcast Down the Hill. Great podcast. And you are always so knowledgeable about this case. And so thank you for coming on the show this morning to dive in with us. Could we start, Barbara, please, with Judge Gall? Yes. What is going on with her? So she just issued her order this week. This is the defense's second effort to have her disqualified qualified or to recuse herself, basically get her off the case, right? And she says, I'm not going anywhere. So one of the things that they have said, their, their big issue with her is that they believe she's biased, not only against them as individuals, but against their client and that she favors the prosecution. And they say that in their filing, asking her to recuse herself, that she basically, you know, has lost the confidence of the public, mm -hmm. that people want to see this trial. She's not allowing cameras in. And they say, that's a problem and that the public wants to see this trial and right. they want that transparency right yes and she says criminal cases are not tried in the court of public opinion they are tried in a court of law she says the courtroom in Carroll County in Delphi where the crime happened where Abby and Libby lived mm -hmm. is too small and doesn't have the right layout for cameras so it certainly sounds like uh. this is a decision she is gonna stick with through uh. the duration but the defense is not done trying to get rid of her. They have had battles with her since right. October of last year. That doesn't seem to be getting any better. So they will likely appeal her decision not to step down. Mm -hmm. If they lose that appeal, this could take us back to the Indiana Supreme Court, where we have Again? already been once with this Barbara. case. And that could potentially cause some additional delays. Now, the last time the Supreme Court did step in right away, they scheduled it for oral arguments. They made a decision within hours. But there is that potential. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is a lot going on. It's far from yeah. over, right, the, this battle far between the over. defense attorneys and Judge Gall. Uh, and there are so many people who I know want to see cameras in. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's, she's right. Cases are not tried in the court of public opinion. That's right. But we're talking about seeing the trial in the court of law. Right. And she also says the media did not follow her instructions the last time she did allow a camera in. So uh, she has lost confidence that the media can ac adequately cover the case, which for the people who are screaming mm -hmm. for transparency, right. right, that's more argument for them that you're hiding all of this. Right. You don't want the sunshine that this trial process right. should bring to the case, you're somehow right. limiting that for certain individuals. And I'm not sure I even understand what in particular she's upset about or what she says wasn't shown because we've seen very little in the way of the courtroom. I mean, right. I think there was, was there one day, correct me if I'm wrong, one, Barbara, yes. but one day. Right. And that hearing ended up only lasting about four minutes and 15 right. seconds because that was when the defense attorneys were removed from the case. Right, I so, remember that. Yeah, so basically it was her coming out and announcing to the prosecution that the defense had stepped down, which also led to a whole other fight that ended up right. at the Supreme Court. But um, yeah, so don't count on cameras anytime soon is uh, certainly the way this is reading. Boy, that's a cry in shame. That really is. Um, Switching gears a little bit, because there's a lot more we want to get to with you, please, Barbara. Richard Allen, this defendant in the case who's accused here, uh, he's had a lot of issues being, as he says, you know, 
harassed, tormented in the jail by some that's been refuted by authorities. Right. Uh, what's going on with this safekeeping order with him? So the defense is trying to get that rescinded. Basically, it was the previous sheriff, who was sheriff at the time of the arrest, and the local judge at the time who said, yes, we can't keep him in Carroll County, mm -hmm. transfer him to the Department of Corrections. He's been held in protective custody in maximum security prisons, mm -hmm. basically since right after his arrest. Wow. So that's going on a year and a half at this point. And um, they say his conditions are, he's being tortured, that the conditions are harsh. He's being treated like somebody who's on death row. He hasn't even been convicted. He hasn't had his day in court yet. So they want all of that removed. They say that the current sheriff has said in a deposition mm -hmm. that the only reason he's housed there is for transportation issues because Carroll County can't transport him. You know, he is wow. transported with a specialized unit. There's multiple officers yeah. who escort him everywhere that he needs to go. So they're saying we need to have that rescinded. This was supposed to be argued last month uh -huh. in a hearing yes. that got canceled because the defense filed for the judge to recuse herself. Oh, I remember so, that. There was a three-day yes. hearing and there was a lot to be taken care right. of during those three days. That was one of the issues. Oh, wow. Uh, Barbara, another one of the big issues when it comes time for trial, if it happens in October, who knows, maybe it'll be postponed again. Uh, we know that the prosecutors want certain words excluded from the case. And this is a big deal and something the defense is fighting hard. It's a big deal. And this was also supposed to be argued at that three-day hearing last month. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting for all of that to be rescheduled now that she has issued her order here. But basically, the defense is going to put on a third-party defense and say not only was Richard Allen not the guy mm -hmm. who killed Abby and Libby, but it's these other people who were members of this white nationalist, Odinist group. And they've named some of these individuals in documents. We are choosing not to name those individuals. Mm -hmm. They have not been charged with anything. Sure. Um, they have not been named suspects or anything by law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But the prosecution now wants the defense to not be able to say certain words during jury selection, opening statements, and the trial, wow. including Odinism, ah. ritual killing, naming these individuals that the defense has named. Sure. And also, they want to prevent them from naming two other individuals who were named by law enforcement previously. Oh, Kegan Klein, the catfisher. Oh. And Ron Logan, the property owner. Property owner, who died, where the bodies, right? He died. Yes, and you've interviewed him. Yes, spoken, and we yes. have a probable cause affidavit that he gave me that mm. says from the FBI that they believe he's the killer. So, wow. The defense says we're going to point the finger at other people, and the prosecution is saying, well, we don't want you to be able to name any of these individuals. Mm -hmm. so sure. We'll see how that goes. Right. And in the opening statements, I can see where the judge would say no, because they're not case evidence. You know, let it come in. And this really makes me think, and perhaps some of our viewers at home, Barbara, think of the Karen Reed case, where the third party culprit defense is being attempted, I should right. say, right now. Uh, the defense isn't getting anywhere with it, and the judge said, you can try to prove this, go right ahead, but not in opening statements. The jury's not right. going to hear it until right. you well, and establish it. When they arrested Richard Allen at that mm. big press conference, the prosecutor and the superintendent of state police both said there could be other people involved in these murders, and wow. we're continuing to investigate, mm -hmm. and we may charge other people. So mm -hmm. if there are other people involved, shouldn't they be able to bring that up at trial? At trial, in, in the case evidence. Yeah, I, I bet that's what the judge and will do. And as jurors, aren't they going to want to know? Because law enforcement has never come out and said Ron Logan was cleared. They never came out and said Kagan Klein was cleared. Oh, that's interesting. So and Ron Logan just died before... He, he died. He was in his was 80s. He, he okay. got sick and, and passed away oh, in early 2022. Where the bodies he, were found. Right, exactly. Right. Okay. And he lied about where he was during the time the girls were okay. missing. Okay. Wow. Uh, there's so much here. I could talk to you all day. <laughs> My friend, Barbara McDonald, you're fantastic. Thank you for all Thanks this information. We'll see you soon.